Hello folks in YouTube land, welcome back to part 3 of Darkest Dungeon Made Easy, although in this part we're going to be possibly using a bit of a weird party build, depending on what we've got here. So, Dirk Stab, Harvest. Harvest is actually a pretty decent uh, ability in terms of DPS. So is Slice Off. Um, so the thing about the Jester is the Jester has some pretty useful abilities, and also he's got a very good stress heal. But, um, he's difficult to use because of, he, he moves around a lot. So I'm thinking about what I'd actually want to build, and I'd want to have the Inspiring Tune, because it's a good stress heal. And, uh, probably, and like, so, Solo. Solo moves him to the front, it hits the entire enemy team, and it moves him to the front of the group. Regardless of where he is, because it's forward three. And then you can do Finale. Um, but then, and then you need, but then you need some way to get, like, back, is the problem. And he doesn't have any ability that moves him backwards directly. So what this means is that you need to have the other character, to avoid missing turns where you're just moving people around, you need to make sure that the other characters in your party can either play from multiple positions when they get, so when they get pushed by the Jester, they can still do useful things. Or you need them to have their own move abilities. What I'm thinking is start the Jester in back or third position with a Vestal in the other of those two things. In, so Jester's in one of the two back ranks and the Vestal is in one of the other two back ranks. Then if you do the solo, he, he moves forward right to the front. And then you can do Finale. Oh, Finale moves you back three. Holy shit. Holy shit. This changes everything. I didn't realize Finale actually moved you back. Wow, that makes this a hell of a lot easier. I'm totally blind. I, I don't think it used to do that. Maybe it did? Maybe I just never noticed. Wow. Okay. Never mind, that becomes a lot easier. But right now, this guy doesn't have the ability to let out that I'd like, and I don't currently want to spend the money on him to unlock the combat skills he needs. So we're still not going to use him right now, but definitely we'll get into that a bit later. I did not... Maybe they changed that. It's possible I just never noticed. I could be... I could be derping. So who do we want to take on our next on our next quest? Well, we, I mean, we got all these new people. Uh, so this, this already looks pretty good. Assuming these people have decent abilities. Wicked Slice kind of sucks. Pistol Shot kind of sucks. Tracking Shot... No, okay. Margus, your ability set really sucks, Dix. We're not gonna... We're gonna take Dismas, not you. Uh, until, until we are willing to spend the money to fix your ability set. Or I may just end up firing Margus, possibly. Um, Cry Havoc. Cry Havoc is a stress heal, which it'd be good to have a stress heal, but it's a really shitty stress heal. It doesn't work super well. Um... Guard Dog 1. This is an okay ability set for the Houndmaster. He's like a little bit tanky, and he, he'd be good. He'd be a good third slot character, so we maybe run... Do I Dismas? Dubos? I'm gonna, re I'm gonna rename him to Dubois, because it's a much cooler name than Dubos. Uh, and Rossant. Rossant. So, what I am gonna spend some money on is... We want to get our Vestals having the abilities we want our Vestals to have. Pretty much always use the same setup for every single Vestal because I'm boring like that, which is the two heals, Judgment, and Dazzling White. Which, you'll notice, it's kind of expensive at this point to do that. I don't want to up, I don't want to spend the stuff to get the cost of those upgrades cheaper just at the moment, though. So take these off. Excellent, that's perfect. Uh, yeah, sure, I can rename the Jester to Casey. I promise we will bring we will bring you along someday, Casey, but not this day. Casey, not Cassid. <laughs> and we probably want to upgrade the abilities on these level 1 characters, so we're going to go ahead and pay for Instructor... This is why we're saving our portraits, right? We need them so we can get Instructor Mastery 1, and now I can make Dismas and Rascent both a lot stronger. Do I want to change Dismas's abilities at all? I don't... I'm not really a big fan of Pistol Shot or Tracking Shot. But 
duelist's advance and point blank shot is fucking powerful actually. High accuracy, loads of damage, and it knocks back and back an enemy. But we have to put Dismas in the front before he can do it. Ah, so that's the, that's the thing. You get synergy with Duelist's Advance and Point Blank Shot. So you can use Duelist's Advance to move him forward, and then Point Blank Shot to move him back. Can do I do everything from both front two positions? No. She. Oh, her skill set sucks. We're gonna have to fix that. Yeah, we need to fix that. I hate this skill loadout. Unless we have a different fighter we could bring. No, because more of you died. So we're going to change her skill set up a bit as well. It's a good thing we saved that money from before. So I'm going to keep Wicked Hack, and I want Barbaric Yop if it bleeds and Breakthrough, which I think is 3,000 at the moment, which is fucking expensive. I may actually go ahead and uh, pay for this. Should have, should have done it before I changed Rasen's skills, but I didn't realize I was going to do that. Yeah, this is going to use up. We're not going to have, like, money to comfortably put people in stress relief while keeping the amount we want. Nor are we going to be able to really afford to upgrade or change Dismas' skills or do any of the other shit we wanted to. Can I take someone else instead of her? What if I were to just build the Jester as a frontline character completely? Is that something that would, like, make any kind of sense? No. Especially not with these particular abilities. And just no in general. That wouldn't make any sense. What have you got? Okay. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna we're just gonna leave this as it is for now. We're just gonna leave it alone. I'm I'm not really happy about this, but we're just gonna leave that be. Which means I shouldn't have used the paintings yet. But we're still gonna be upgrading some skills, so it's not too bad. Um yeah, so I'm thinking I'm going to get rid of Tracking Shot and Pistol Shot 1. Mm, the problem that that'll give us, though, is we might not be able to do enough damage to people in further back ranks. Like, Pistol Shot sucks, in my opinion, but... Oh, hey, it gives him plus 25 damage versus Marked. Pistol Shot did not used to do that. That may be less useless now, especially since we have Dubois here, who uh, the Houndmaster can mark people. So we may actually we may actually rethink this. What is this achievement? It's red. The other ones are not fully upgraded. At least four of hero skills. Okay, I will. And you, we're upgrading these four things. We could also upgrade the armor of these people if we have enough deeds. The bellows blast once again. Armor or weapons. The forge stands ready to make weapons of war. Do I is a strange name. How about, uh, yeah, du Dubai, fine. We'll call you Dubai, because I can pronounce that without feeling like I've lost my mind. Uh, we don't really want to spend the money just at the moment on the stuff from the blacksmith, so we'll wait for that. And we'll put one, one of these lucky candidates gets to go into stress relief. I think it's going to be Reynold. He will only pray, so it won't be Reynold, because fuck you, Reynold. We'll put Linda into the transept. Actually, no, it will be Reynold, because we need more frontliners. Enjoy your time in the transept, Reynold. I'm going to spend these to reduce the treatment costs, because money is kind of tight. A man in a robe, claiming I kneel, I count the, the beads, I whisper the secret Madness. words. Okay. So you spend a little while in town this time. Hopefully that's all right with people. It's okay with me. Hopefully it's alright with people. Um, I'm just going to be, you know, taking as long as I take at each stage of our journey here. I'm not too worried about going super fast. Uh, so we got another short quest in the estate map, in the ruins. It's kind of weird because at this point I'm pretty sure we would previously have had other quests available to us, but we don't. Kind of weird. Whatever. That's fine. These short ruins quests, it's fine. Two shovels, two keys, and that should be fine. Oh, I should probably bring at least some torches. <laughs> I, I forget to buy torches pretty frequently, so if I'm like about to hit embark and I don't have any torches yet, please start screaming at your monitor, and I will hear you. Yeah, you get two dog treats now in the new version of the game. I saw that in the patch notes, so I was not surprised. 
It makes sense to me, but uh, I always forget to use the dog treat. Now I have two. The fiends must be driven back. So I can forget to use them to twice as hard now. The seat of our noble line. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do sometimes just forget to bring torches for some reason. I just slips my mind, you know. It's like, yep, we got everything we need, and then just I'll, I'll have like two anti venom, two bandages, two medicinal herbs, just everything you could possibly want, and then just no, no torches. Uh, so what, what do we want to do here? This guy does not actually have his marking ability, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Um, we're going to use this guy to kind of become a little bit tanky in that case. We'll guard the Vestal for the moment. And uh, it means he'll be better at dodging. And as for you... I guess make this dude bleed to death. The dog treats make the Hound Master's attacks considerably. Greatly increases the Hound's vigor for a short time. It just makes the um, the dog attacks the Hound Master can do a lot stronger. So it's pretty useful. Ringing ears. Blood vision. But I always forget to use them, despite their utility. If, they're, if I'm on a boss level, I remember to use them when I get to the boss, generally. So there is that. Go ahead and heal up our Helion. Keeping everybody with as much health as possible, as much of the time as possible, so that hopefully nobody dies this time. Not a fan of my characters all dying. That was some bad RNG there. Not killing that bo bone courtier. <laughs> I, I will often choose to pronounce the bone courtier's name as courtier. Do not ask why. That path leads to madness. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. For all I know, it's correct. I mean, it's a French word, right? This expedition, at least. No, I'm pretty sure it's supposed success. to be courtier, not courtier. But fuck you, nonetheless. What are we doing here? 100% of rum battles. So we we may be able to skip some rums, which would be nice. Assuming that's one of the most valuable things about scouting is um, learning which rooms you can skip and which rooms you can't. We don't currently need to scout in this next room, though, so I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just going to leave the torch how it is for the moment. Bone Cotier. <laughs> uh, so, this is unfortunate. Hound's Harry is a really, really good attack against enemies that can bleed. Skeletons... Skeletons cannot bleed. So, regrettably, we will not be using the Hound Master's best attack in this particular instance. However, we are going to, uh, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, we're gonna guard Dog. We're actually gonna guard Dog, um, what's her name there? Uh, Dubai, because she's much more likely to be hit than the Vestal is. And I just want to get some hits on that Hound Master, because fuck that Hound Master. I hope he dies. No, that's not the reason. The reason is that he has a lot of dodge. When I do that ability, he buffs his own dodge in addition to guarding the enemy. So here I'm going to use Judgment, because here what I want to do is here, heal the Vestal, but the Vestal, of course, can heal herself while also damaging someone. So here we go. We're doing it. We're using Judgment. This will only happen once in a blue moon, so enjoy it while you can. Hopefully we crit and we kill this guy. Nope. Worst possible damage roll. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not upset. So the Adrenaline Rush. We can heal the bleed. She can heal her own bleeding. That's cool. And she's also buffed. That's cool. That's a really good ability, actually. That she can heal blight and bleed on herself and buff herself and heal one damage all at the same time. Is pretty, pretty powerful. It's pretty good, actually. Yeah, so there, that attack was targeted at uh, Dubai, but because Dubois was guarding Dubai, the attack went to Dubois instead, and Dubois was able to dodge it with his massively buffed dodge chance. Which just tells you that I am the best and the coolest and the strongest when it comes to playing Darkest Dungeon. And literally nothing else in life. I'm pretty, pretty bad at everything else. Um, 
The Grave Robber has one, and so does the Plague Doctor. They both have things that allow them to cure Blight and Bleed. Uh, the Plague Doctor's is even better, because he can do it on himself and another character at the same time. Which is super strong. So we're just going to kill somebody with our dog. Actually, I believe it's pronounced Dog. Yes, I believe Dog is the correct pronunciation. No. Oh, man. Wow. Iron Swan does a lot of damage, but only to the back row. So I'm going to try and just Iron Swan this Bone Arbalist out of life. Sadly, we did not do enough damage to kill him. But he's very low now, so later. Later, we can terminate his life with extreme prejudice. Maybe we should try to endeavor not to be prejudiced. Ah, fuck it. Okay, you kill that guy. As long as he's dead, I don't kill. I don't care who kills him. As long as he's dead. So we want to kill one of these dudes if possible. Pistol shot may actually kill this bone arbalist. I keep getting bad damage rolls. It's okay. These things happen. Dog. You roll the G, dog. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think we're going with that. Henceforth, henceforth, that is what we're going with. No, I think I'll stick with dog for the most part. Uh, kill, 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 kill. Their formation is broken. All right. The offensive. We're doing good. Everyone came out of this fight in pretty good shape. We have killed the shit out of our enemies. They're just totally fucked up. And now we get a chest. Which is nice, because I, I like getting chests. Unlocked, eh? Unlocked, huh? Um, why don't, uh... Why don't you open this one, Rassin? Hmm, not trapped. Surprising. I always expect the unlocked ones to be trapped. But sometimes they're not. Sometimes we're lucky. GDI. Nah, I'm, I'm more of a Nod player myself. Okay. Torches, traps, all going good for us. This, this, this quest should be a breeze, he says before being absolutely destroyed by RNG in the following encounter. Yeah, most likely. We do want to scout after this room if possible, so... Treasure ahead, I'd wager! We already know that there's no treasure, Dubois. We, are, we already know that there's no treasure. This is a very weak, uh, weak roof battle, though. This is a really good roll for us, because spiders are super easy to kill. We might get some diseases. Uh, no, poison. We might get poisoned a little bit, but, you know, whatever. They're fucking those spiders. They have almost no health. These guys will be dead right quick, and we'll, we'll be doing great. Dubois is not feeling super good at the moment, but he'll, he's going to be fine. Don't, don't even worry about him. He's, he's going to be just fine. Who do we want to kill today? How about you? Yeah, how about you? And now you kill the rest of them. Ah, uh, nearly. You, you almost did it, Dismas. Oh, well, you effectively did because there's waiting. We, we like the spider roll. So, we don't know what's in this room. If it's a battle, we have to go there. If it's not a battle, we want very much to skip it. This is why scouting is important and why I buffed my torch, but sadly we still didn't get scouting. Um... If I skip it now, I'm going to have to backtrack a really long way, which gives you a lot of stress. But again, there is a, a hall battle. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next room, and hopefully I'll get scouting there, and then I'll know for sure. I don't, I don't know whether or not I need to come back. You know, yeah, well, we're going to ignore that for now and just pray we don't need to go there. It's basically going to be the play. Do I have anti-venom? No. No, I do not. We got a bit of extra food, so I'm just gonna go ahead and eat. Because why not? When you have, like, more food than you could ever possibly need, you may as well eat a little bit. We're gonna ignore this urn. This pack has already been looted. That's unfortunate for us. So hopefully we'll get scouting in here. And then we'll know whether or not we had to go to that room. Yes, excellent. Damn. 
Sometimes when you get scouting in this situation, it will show you one of these rooms, but as you can see, and other times, no. So we still don't know. We may have fucked up. But considering we had two fights here and here, and this is a fight, that is probably all of the fights. We pro there's, It's unlikely there's a fight there. Now watch and observe, as there is totally a fight there. <laughs> It's, it's, it's unlikely, so I'm going to say that it's definitely going to happen. Because that's how these types of games are played. I'm really looking forward to XCOM 2 launching early next month. Not just because XCOM Enemy Unknown is one of my favorite games in years and years and years, but because I'm really looking forward to doing a playthrough of XCOM uh, 2 on the channel so that we can make terrible, foolish mistakes and taunt RNG and be completely wrecked. Because, I don't know, I guess I'm just a sucker for punishment. I really enjoy the awkwardness of streams and YouTube videos where I just fuck up so, so bad. I know that's that probably like runs counter to what most YouTubers and streamers... Because I've heard a lot of YouTubers or streamers say, like, yeah, I don't do puzzle games. Because like when you get stuck on something, it's like so, you know, embarrassing and so rough. You know? Um, I... I kind of relish it at this point, like, that's- it's hilarious. It's hilarious. If you want an example, go and look through my old YouTube videos. Search on my channel for my playthrough of Limbo. I get stuck on a really simple puzzle in that for like 45 minutes. It's fine. I find it really funny, personally. I- I, uh, I spent a lot of- you should go watch those videos, because I spent a shitload of time editing those. Not, I didn't remove anything. I spent a shitload of time editing them because I decided that it needed a death counter. Because I died a lot playing through Limbo. Uh, and adding in the death counter took a long time. A long time. Long. Long time. <laughs> that was... That was difficult. I believe the final death count... I don't want I kinda don't want to spoil it. a victory, nonetheless. I kind of don't want to spoil it. Let's just say that the death count is considerable. Will I do MP battles in XCOM 2? Probably not. It depends. If they make it better than it was in Enemy Unknown, maybe. But, you know, probably not. Because they kind of sucked in Enemy Unknown. At least in my opinion. So that was really bad luck. Dismas hasn't had a 90% chance to, uh, to get that, and he fucked it up. And now he's going to bleed so much that he... You know what, I'm guessing this is going to be the last room we have to face, so... We've been getting very little hunger lately. Uh, maybe maybe they changed it in the patch, because we've had very little hunger so far tonight. Just in general. We're going to tempt fate by eating a bunch. If we have to backtrack, I'm guessing we're going to get hunger twice and everyone's going to suffer. Hopefully that doesn't happen. We're doing super good, so I'm going to snuff out this torch. I'm, I'm really pegging a lot on this being the last room we have to visit. If this is not the last room we have to visit, I'm going to feel sad inside my body and soul. I really hope this is the last room. I think it probably is, but it could easily not be as well. Uh, I, I tend to engage in prayer as a bad luck mitigation mechanic. Not, not really, because I don't believe in any kind of power, higher power or whatever, but, uh... You just really gotta hope. I'm gonna go ahead and do this bleed attack, even though only two of these people can bleed, because... No, that's probably a bad idea. That's actually probably a bad idea. We might be better off doing not that. Maybe we, uh, we guard Dismas, because our Houndmaster can afford to take a few hits. Dismas is looking kind of low there. I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not. I usually don't have that ability on the Houndmaster. I usually opt for something different. But uh, because we're so early in the game, at the moment, we're using lots of abilities that I would not generally want to bring. Hopefully this kills this Bone Rep. That's the- come on, man! My damage possibility was 6 to 12, the Bone Rabble has 8 HP, so I only need a middling roll, like on the low end of middle roll, to kill him. And instead we get the lowest possible value. 
the lowest possible value. That just that just really sucks, man. Just really sucks. It's okay though. We can still kill everyone with the grape shot blast. Dismas. Dismas. Come on, man. Dismas, just get it together, dude. You f you you turned your pistol into a shotgun. So it's like a, it's firing like a shotgun. And you missed everybody. <sighs> Dismas, man. I just I, I don't know anymore. You know. You're just not a team player, Dismas. Just not a team player, man. All you, all you had to do, you know? So Dismas was no longer being guarded there. We may I, I may have misunderstood something at some point. Surprising, I know. Uh, let's, let's hit you with Iron Swan. Dubai. You're killing me here, guys. You, you, you people, you know, get your shit together. Do you have any kind of accuracy at all? Any of any of you? Any kind of accuracy? Anyone? No? Oh. Okay, Dismas. Here we go. Here we go. Um, actually... Yeah, do the Grape Shot Blast. Okay, so you get an 85% chance to hit. Yeah, I know how the abilities work, but I thought the... Because he still got the buff for two more rounds. It means that the uh, the protection thing only lasted one one turn, which is weird. I figured it would last three turns, like the buff does, but it wore off almost immediately. Perched at the very precipice of oblivion. Oh yeah, it may have lasted two turns instead of three, and then. Well, we should probably stop Dismas from dying. I mean, he can't he can't hit anything. He's he's absolute garbage. He's of no help whatsoever to the team, but we should probably stop him from dying. At least we got a good damage roll on the Houndmaster there. Okay, so this should be a uh, a hit. All right, that's that's cool. That's cool, Dubai. That's fine. Just miss. That's we don't that's that's cool. Man, I don't know what what, what do I pay these people for? Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think I actually pay them anything. I believe they just go down to these terrible hills out of the goodness of their own hearts. Next battle. I don't think there will be a next battle. I should use those dog treats now. It's too late for that, however. I, I guess hit these corpses, because that's all you can do. Uh, keep healing Dismas for the time being. Nice getting a crit there. The best thing about getting a crit with a heal is not that it heals more, it's that it also relieves stress. And stress is permanent. So, when my heroes take health damage, they, um... Shit. So, there's one more battle somewhere. And it's either in the next room, or I'm going to have to backtrack and get a crapload extra stress. Hopefully we don't have to backtrack. Yeah, so the deal is, health damage is gone. As soon as the adventure ends, you don't need to worry about the health damage you took anymore. It's just gone. It's fine. Stress remains, and you need to pay money in Even town to get rid of it. Stone seems bent on preventing so health is, like, bad immediately, because people might die, but the real killer in this game, the thing that really gets you is, is high stress, because you end up wasting all your money on stress relief in town, or not having the characters you need and having to run an inoptimal party for a new adventure, or, uh, it just... Stress, stress is the real killer, so you want to be careful. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I should have used torches. <laughs> They're working for fame and occasionally to steal items from the party. Yeah, I guess... I guess so. So our party is... <sighs> Mm. This is not going well for us. This is very abruptly not going well for us. I should have used torches before. You know what? We're just going to use the torches now so that we don't fucking die. We require only the strength to follow it. 
So, I'm not going to move Dismas here. Because the Hellion needs to get to the front row. It's So when you want to reorder people, reordering people is actually... I will use a dog trait as soon as it's the Houndmaster's turn. Only the Houndmaster can use the dog traits. Um, reordering people is complicated. You might be inclined to go here. Well, Dismas needs to be in position 2. And he can get there. So we'll put Dismas into position 2 using his move. But if we do that, then the Hellion is all the way back here. And Hellion only has one move. So it's going to take a shitload of turns to get the Hellion to the front. So instead, we're going to leave Dismas there. What we, what you, the way you need to think about it is not the absolute position a character should be in, but rather their relative position in terms of the party. So Dismas should be behind the Hellion. So we're not going to move it so that Dismas is in front of the Hellion, because then we're making the, the order worse, not better. Even though Dismas would be in the correct absolute position, he would be in the wrong relative position. And we'd be making shit hard for the uh, for the Hellion. Then. So we're not going to do that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that ramble. Or hopefully it was useful to people strategically. So literally the only thing here the Vestal can do is move back. This kind of sucks, but it's okay. Because the Vestal... The Houndmaster should not be in the first rank. But the Houndmaster should be in front of the Vestal. So this is fine. This is actually fine. Um, and we're, we're not, we could move the Houndmaster back now, but that would be retarded. Because if we did that, the Vestal would then be in the front again. It's a real pain in the ass when your dudes get out of order. Yeah, tracking shot and then pistol is a thing, but, like, the buff is so low that isn't it just going to be better to keep firing your pistol? I forgot to use the dog trait. I am, I am the worst and the stupidest. Anyway, let's get this Hellion moving forward. I was so caught up in thinking about positioning of characters that I completely forgot about my dog tree. So Dismas is going to get tested now. Alright, Dismas, what do you got for... Oh, and rest sound. Okay, that's fine. She's, she's doing alright. And frailty. She's just a little bit frightened, but fear never killed anyone, except for when heart attacks were an instant kill. This is not ideal. I mean, we're gonna be fine. I, I, I expect to defeat this adventure successfully, even. But, um... Let me think about this. So I could move Dismas here one space in front of the Vestal. But I think it's better to have Dismas shoot. I'm just going to shoot this born Bone Cotier. Hopefully kill him. Okay, Dog Tree. We're using the Dog Tree. Bam! Dog Tree. 50% damage, 15% accuracy. Very good buff. So, the Houndmaster. If we move him back one, he'll be... That'll be better, but... No, we're not going to do that. We need, we need attacks right now. Then again, this attack kind of... Not that great. No, we'll move. Holy shit! I did not want to click the pass button. I was actually trying to click on the move button. I misclicked. <sighs> Alright, we're doing fine. <laughs> um, we're gonna use judgment because because uh, Rasen could use the heal. The buttons are right next to each other in my defense. You know, I, I tried to click one thing, I clicked the other. Okay, you, Dubai, move forward. Get the Houndmaster back where he can do something better in terms of damage, so that in his next turn we will not be wasting our dog treats. <laughs> Yes, I know we're going to have a heart attack eventually. It's okay. We don't need our hearts to live. They're not that strong. Oh, hey, thanks, Rassant. You're in your correct position now. Sometimes, sometimes the negative effects of an affliction can work in your favor. In this case, Rassant moved to her correct position, and I still got to make my turn, which is good. Very good. 
Uh, so let's see, we can one-shot this madman. We can maybe one-shot the bone soldier. The arbalist, we can... The arbalist would be the best person to kill, but it's also the lowest chance of working. We've had lots of bar bad RNG on Dubai so far, so I'm gonna say that our bad luck spree is in an end, and this will hit and kill the bone arbalist. It did not kill him, but we did at least hit him. That's fine. Okay, so now we can start actually using these dog treats, getting our extra damage in here. Which, at this point, doesn't matter anymore. That's great! That's cool. That's fine. Things going badly are key to a TTC adventure. I think that's true. I think that's true. It's been a while since, uh... Since we had a situation where I really felt it was relevant to say this time things will be different. It was kind of my catchphrase for a while, though, if you've been following my channel for a while, which I know Odin has been. Um, bad things happen, and then I tend to suggest that this time things will be different. Frequently they are not different. They are not different. Let's just try and end this guy as quickly as possible. Uh, so, tensions are running high, stress is escalating, but people have lots of health left, so that's good. Health is good. We do like health. And I think we're going to be fine. I reckon we can get through one more fight. I think we can get through one more fight, and it's not going to be a big deal. We have one more dog treat left, and uh, I, think, I think it's going to be fine. The only thing really bad that could happen is if the fight is in this room, not this room. So fingers crossed we went the correct way. Today the stream is not getting as many viewers as last time. I don't really care, because I was going to be playing this anyway, so I don't even know why I bring it up. Shit. That's fine. I mean, it's okay. It just means we're going to end up with a lot more stress than we would otherwise have. I still expect to complete this adventure successfully. You may consider retreating at this point. This would be an okay time to retreat. Um, but... So the thing about these kinds of games is I tend to play very cautiously. These Darkest Dungeon, XCOM, Sunless Sea is another example. These games may seem very different in terms of gameplay mechanics, especially Sunless Sea. I think it'll seem weird to people who've played that, maybe me putting in with these games. The reason I do that, though, is that the fundamental mechanic of these games, the fundamental thing, although in terms of your moment-to-moment -moment actions and moment-to-moment -moment battle mechanics and stuff like that, they're very different, the fundamental thing, the most important thing, is about risk management. Um, and I tend to do very well in games where the fundamental thing is risk management, but I also have a tendency to play it very, very safe. Which can make it a little bit boring, I think, especially to watch, and it gets a little bit samey for me. It's like, I'll succeed regularly, but I'm not succeeding in a way that's particularly exciting. In real life, that is fantastic. That is absolutely perfect. Because in real life, after you get hit by a train, you don't get to try again. But in video games, it's probably going to be more fun to take the more risky play a lot of the time. So that's what we're doing in this case. Um, we, we could possibly decide to abandon here, and I think that would be the safer strategy, and possibly the correct one, because we know we have this fight and then another fight after this, but I think it'll be more interesting to try. I think it'll be more interesting if we, if we give this a shot. Nice! Dubois, finally somebody gets a, uh... No, we're not using the dog treat here. I'm going to be using my treat in the final battle. Not here. Although, this is a pretty tough spawn. So, maybe now? I mean, there's a chance the last room battle will just be like spiders or maggots or something and will be super easy. Whereas, we know this battle is... It's not... The thing about this is it, it's not that hard. This is not an easy fight, but it's not that bad either. I'd say it's like a 50-50 chance whether the battle in the next room will be easier or harder than this one. I'm probably going to forget it if I don't use it now, so I may as well just use it now. 
I know it lasts between rooms, but we're not going to end this battle within three rounds. This is this is the only chance we're going to get to use it. So nobody can really bleed here. So we're just we're just going to be trying to hit with our hounds rush. If somebody gets too close to a heart attack, we'll start using this stress heal. I probably could have used this earlier, but it's a really garbage stress heal. This sucks. The way this works is it affects everyone, but it has a 65% chance to heal three stress. So maybe it will heal a tiny amount of stress on everyone. Kinda garbage. Uh, if we get super close to a heart attack, we don't really want the heart attack debuff. I might start trying to use it, but for now... I think we're just going to try and hit people in the face and kill them. So let's fuck up this bo bone courtier. Well struck. Wrecked. Very good. Great, now step aside and let a professional in. Dismiss, you're not exactly professional. Remember that time you tried to grape shot blast and you missed everything? Because I remember. Oh, how well do I remember... Dubai, you had to do one more damage. I chose this guy, not this guy. You could have one-shot killed either of them, but I chose this guy because it was more likely you'd one-shot kill them. You needed one more damage, though. Dubai, man. Lady, girl. Dubai, you're just letting the team down. She's just letting the team down. Alright. Well, Grape Shot Blast will kill this bone soldier and hurt the other two, so that's good. No, he didn't miss. That's nice. I was kind of expecting him to miss, because I was I was speaking of the benefits that would occur from the attack, and when you do that, you generally expect it to fail. But not in this case. Alright, hopefully this will kill this mad Matt. Dubois. I gave you the dog treat and everything. If I gave him the dog treat and everything, I mean, he still he still couldn't get it together. Don't do it, Dismas. Oh, that's fine. So, Dismas decided to use Tracking Shot without any input from me. It's okay, I guess. It's not a bad buff, Tracking Shot, but it just doesn't really feel worthwhile compared to just hitting people in the face. Dubai. You rolled your lowest possible damage. You, you needed to do two more damage that time. You, you can't quite... You're not really working with me here, Dubai. I think I might have to fire you from the team, because you are apparently terrible luck. So our Vestal was almost at a heart attack. I kind of don't want to waste this dog treat, though. I, I kind of want to re do the stress heal, but we don't want to waste the dog treat, right? Okay, if we get the best possible damage roll, we can one-shot this bone arbalest. And we can only do it because of the dog treat. So if we get the one shot here, it means the dog treat was good and helpful and useful. And if we don't, then f just don't use dog treats ever again, I guess, basically, is the correct reasoning. Yeah, okay, dog treats are done. Just completely out. Pointless. If it were me, that would have been a killing blow. Dubai. Dubai. You can't- you cannot say that. Du I guess 90% of this run is now going to be me berating the characters in my party. I hope that's okay. <laughs> if it were me, it would have been a killing blow. Like, really? Are, are you being serious? Guys, can we all calm down? No. A hand's breadth from becoming unwound. Alright, Dismas, you killed that one guy. That guy's... Okay, it's it's over now. It's over. This is gonna be it. This is... Can't actually do what I wanted to. Well, kill that corp... Okay, that's good. You get the maximum possible damage roll when attacking a corpse. Excellent. Very important. Very important to hit those corpses nice and hard. So that they stay dead. This momentum. Push on to the task's end. Okay. We got one more fight. We have one more fight. We just need to get through one more fight. Guys, can we please just keep it together? Rasant is having a very bad day. 
I can't remember what happens if you get to 200, 200 again after a heart attack. I believe that is where you now reach instant death. I'm not sure. Let's just, uh, let's just win this battle. This is gonna be an easy one, right? It has to be. Well, it's not too bad. We don't have any stress givers here, which is actually good for us at our current state. Uh, just to keep that stress low, we're gonna use another torch. After we finish this dungeon, I'm going to go, because I'm going to be having dinner pretty soon. But I may resume streaming a bit later tonight. We'll see what happens. For those of you watching on YouTube, of course, it'll just mean the end of the video part, so you don't care that much. Anyway, uh, okay, Dismas. Shoot him! Just shoot him. One of them dodged, but you did okay. All we need to do here is just kill everyone. Pretty much like my real life. And then we're done. Everything's fine. Uh, I think the best thing to do here would be to heal everyone. Deep, deep strats. I haven't eaten anything today, so the two drinks I had have really gone to my head is the other reason we're going to take a bit of a break from the stream until after I've eaten. If you don't eat anything, and then you start drinking gin, it's very effective, which is good. We're actually going to buff Dismas here with the tracking shot. We're actually going to use the tracking shot. Because the pistol shot is garbage, and we need to use the pistol shot on these guys to hit them on Dismas, so we may as well make it a bit less garbage. <laughs> Yeah, people who are overstressed talk more. Like, once you have a, uh, an affliction, or when you have a... Once you get past stress, characters talk more. I think it was just sort of uh, lucky happenstance that they seem to be responding to each other. Maybe not, but I'm pretty sure it was just kind of fortunate that that happened. Alright, kill this guy. Alright, one enemy left, and then we can check out what's in the sarcophagus and go home. The script in this game is great in general, I just really like the dialogue. Alright, Dismas. Get some damage in. We're almost done. We just gotta kill the Sarboist. This is no challenge. I long for honorable battle! Are you serious? Everyone is everyone is having heart attacks and dying, and you're just like, yeah, this is the same no thing. Now that I think about it, Dubai is kind of a badass. <laughs> yeah, I really like the Highwayman. Um, not just because it's a useful class, but because the the character is really funny. I think my favorite in terms of the character, although they're not that great as like a, a class to use, but my favorite in terms of the character is the grave is the grave robber. The stuff the grave robber says when you camp is really really funny, which hopefully we'll get to see later. Right now we don't have any grave robbers on the team, but we will get them later because I like the grave robbers. Not the strongest class, but not terrible either. So this sarcophagus is slightly ajar. I'm gonna have Dismas open this because he has full health. The hero contemplates mortality. That's great. He now has. Thanatophobia. What is Thanatophobia? More stress damage if HP is low. That's eh, okay. It's not that big of a deal. Room by room, hall by hall, we reclaim what is ours. I didn't have any medicinal herbs. Oh, I did. I did have medicinal herbs. I should have used those. I did not realize I had them. Anyway, that went okay. Everyone got really stressed out and lost control, but it went okay. What you'll notice about this game is it kind of has an inverse difficulty curve at first. It gets... So the way this game works is the difficulty curve is kind of more of a difficulty staircase. Or like a... There's no real good analogy. So what happens is, when you first start, the game gets easier and easier as you level up your heroes. And then you get to the point where you have level 3 heroes and you need to do the level 3 quests. And then it is harder than it was when you first started. For a little while. But then you level those heroes up more, and it gets easier. 
Then you get to level 6. So the reason I said difficulty staircase is that it kind of goes smoothly, and then you hit this wall where it gets a lot harder. And and then, you know, so that that's how the difficulty goes in this game. These first few missions can be quite tricky, and bad things will happen. But uh, we will time, pretty soon settle will into a groove where most missions are not that hard for us. Anyway, that's the end of this part, those of you watching on YouTube. So goodbye!